Hello and welcome to this session in which we will work a CPA exam simulation that deals with subsequent event and discovery of facts. We're going to be giving eight different scenarios and for each scenario we are going to determine whether we need to modify the financial statements, add a footnote to the year end, recall the financial statements, there's something wrong with them, or no action is needed. This simulation could appear on the CPA exam or this topic could be tested in a form of a multiple choice. So each scenario could be a multiple choice or this, this could be presented as a simulation. I'm going to look at it from a simulation perspective. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. The field work for Adam Company June 30th audit concluded on August 15th, 20X9, with the financial statement signed report sent by September the 10th, determine the correct action, what do we need to do, and provide justification for the following eight independent cases. So first, we have a few dates we need to be aware of. Then we're going to be given scenarios and what needs to be done. First is the year-end financial statements, which is June 30th, 20X9. Then the end of the field work is August 15th. So this is simply put, we finished doing any work and we dated the report as of that date. The financial statements are issued or mailed September 10th. What do we need to know is this, the period between June 30th and August 15th, this is called subsequent events period. The period after September 10th is called subsequent discovery of facts. And from August 15th till September 10th, all what we're doing here is basically processing financial statements. Let's take a look at the first scenario and determine what needs to be done. The auditor find out that on December 15th, 20X4, so December 15, we're, we're talking subsequent discovery period. That one of Adam's company debtors declared bankruptcy on July 15th. So they discovered here that the company filed a bankruptcy July 15th. And the debtor had a sale with Adam as of January of that year. So the sale took place here. They filed for bankruptcy here. And we did not know about it until December 15th. Should we do nothing? Option four. So let's go back. You want to copy these options down. Nothing. Do we need to modify? Do we need to add a footnote? Or do we need to recall the financial statements for editing? Basically, they are wrong and it needs to be edited. Well, let's take a look at the facts here. Should we have known about this bankruptcy? And the answer is yes. 100% yes. Because during the subsequent event period, this is when they declared the bankruptcy. And why did we not know about it until December 15th? This amount should have been determined to be incollectible before year end. Well, but it was discovered after we issued the financial statements. Guess what? We need to recall the financial statements. We need to recall, which is option three. Recall the June 30th financial statements and reissue them, there's a problem. So this will be, the answer will be option three. So again, this is option three. This would require the most amount of work. Let's take a look at this one. On December 15th, so sometime here, it came to the auditor's knowledge that the debtors of Adam Company went insolvent October 1st, also October 1st in the subsequent discovery period. This sale was transacted April 15th. So the sale that related to this transaction was transacted April 15th. This is when the sale took place. And it seems recoverable as of June 30th, as well as of August 19th. So when we looked at June 30th, when we look at August 15th, everything looks good. What needs to be done here? And the answer is nada. Nada. Option four. Nothing is applicable here. Option four. Now this, you know, this write-off will be applicable to the following 
do the following auditing year. But for this year, we don't have to do anything because everything that happened was after we even mailed the financial statements. And when we issued the financial statement, everything looked good. No action is needed. Let's take a look at this one. The auditor learned on August 10th, August 10th is right here, subsequent period, that the debtor, the debtor of Adam Company be, became bankrupt as of August 1st. So August 1st, 10 days earlier, okay, they went bankrupt. We learned about it on the 10th. The last sale with the with debtor happened on April 2nd, 20X8. So sometime in the past, we made a sale and there was no cash transaction since then. What do we have to do? What do we have to do? So what do we have to do is this. We have to make an adjustment. Why? Because as of year end, we had a receivable. And right before the issuance of the financial statement, before the end of the field work, we, we, we knew that that's, that's it. This person went bankrupt. What do we need to do? We need to make an adjustment, removing their account receivable. Therefore, as far as the options are concerned, this is option one, modify the June 30th. So we need to go, we need to adjust. Why? Because the AR existed and now we have information before the issuance of the financial statements. Let's take a look at this scenario. Adam reached an out-of-court settlement on a lawsuit from 2016. So the lawsuit was pending on July 20th. This is when we reached it. So we reached it in a subsequent period. July 20th is here. The lawsuit is currently documented as a potential liability. What do we have to do? Well, there, it was a potential liability. What do we have to do? Also, option one, we have to book. We have to book an adjusting entry. Modify the June 30th financial statement because in the subsequent discovery, there was something outstanding as of J June 30th. Therefore, we have to book an entry, make an adjustment, modify the June 30th. Let's take a look at this scenario. Adam faced a legal defeat on September 18th. So September 18th is here from a case that started in 20X8, sometime in the past. The June 30th footnote indicate the legal team's belief it's likely and a likely positive outcome. So as of June, as of as of June 30th, we truly believed we were going to win. And now this happened when? This happened when we find out it happened on September 18th. Do we need to go back and adjust the statements or recall them? And the answer is no, because we did not know until September 18th, as of June 30th, also we have to assume as of also August the 15th, we believed the, the positive, uh, we, we had a positive outcome. Therefore, nothing, there's nothing, nothing to be done because as of June 30th, as of August the 15th, that's the information that we had. Now this happened after the fact, that's fine. This is basically an event for the following year. That's fine. Let's take a look at this example. Early 20X9, Adam was accused of a patent infringement. The lawsuit was filed July 18th, 20X9. So July 18th in the subsequent period event. Legal advice suggests that a possible significant loss for Adam. Now, well, we were accused of it. They filed the lawsuit. It's during the field work before basically before the end of the field work subsequent period do we have to do something and the answer is yes here we said we are going to lose there's a significant loss if we are going to lose what do we have to do but we cannot here we are, we are going to lose but we don't know the dollar amount so we are going to lose there's a good chance we are going to lose no dollar amount what do we need to do here you will need to disclose when you when you are going to lose but you cannot estimate the loss, you will need to disclose. Therefore, option two is disclose. Now, if, if this adds and the estimated loss is, let's assume $50,000 or half a million, then you have to go with option one, which is debit a loss, credit a liability. It means book a journal entry as of June 30th. But since we don't know the amount, all that we have to do is disclose, which is option two. Let's take a look at this one. On May 15th, 20X9, sometime here, the auditor became aware of a lawsuit against Adam from February 28th, okay? That was not insured. What do we have to do? That's all what we know. The lawsuit originated in, the, in this year, 
but the amount of the loss is unknown. What do we have to do under those circumstances? Disclose, which is option two. Disclose in the footnotes about the lawsuit. Again, if we know if we know the amount, if we know we are going to lose, then that's a different story. It just disclose is good enough for now. Let's take a look at this case. On August 5th, so August 5th is sometime here. The auditor came across information that a debtor of Adam Company declared bankruptcy July 30th. July 30th, they declared bankruptcy. And the reason they declared this bankruptcy because they lost a case as of 7-9, they lost the case. After 7-9, by the end of July, end of July, they declared bankruptcy. We know about this rank bankruptcy August 5th. What do we have to do under those circumstances? Well, as of June 30th, as of June 30th, we would see, if we looked at, at this customer account receivable, everything looks good because we cannot see that they're going to be sued. They lost the case. And because of this case, they filed for bankruptcy. So basically, as of, as of, as of June 30th, everything looks good. However, the judgment here would say, write off the account. You are not required to do so. Okay, because as of June 30th, everything looks good because the financial statements as of June 30th and everything that happened that affected that amount after that June 30th. Okay, I would say footnote is definitely at least footnote, but most auditor will go ahead and book, book an entry. If you want to be conservative, book an entry means write off the account. That means make and adjust an entry. So you can go with option one, which is make an adjustment or option two, option to just make the note for as of June 30th. Obviously, the company will have to write off the account, but they will not adjust their account receivable as of June 30th. Here it becomes a judgment. Hopefully, you will not get anything like this on the CPA exam. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional MCQs. Exercises, simulation, true false, that's going to help you with your CPA exam as well as your audit course. I'm here to help you invest in yourself. The CPA exam is worth it. Your career in accounting.